Hello everyone, I have some excellent news. We have the physical build of the Yaw 2 completed. I have still not even plugged it in, nor done any of the software tuning, but I do have all the wiring rearranged, and the build is done, and etc. So, we're going to be going over a lot of stuff today. Um, it's going to be a longer video. I'm going to go into some detail on some of the ideas I had with the build. The idea being I want everybody who is and isn't familiar with what's going on with these Yaw 2 chairs or VR motion simulation uh, equipment in general. So um, if uh, it sounds a little uh, condescending or I'm trying to over explain, please bear with me. This is not scripted, nor am I a professional videographer, so uh, bear with me if I repeat myself or whatever, but what I want to do is, part of this video is to kind of go through the actual thought process, which is actually really critical to doing your own build, because uh, there are infinite varieties of doing things like this, and... Um, the idea is by this video, maybe do some, uh, you know, get some inspiration, look at what you have, what you want to do with your stuff, and uh, figure stuff out. Save some money too, because there's some great tricks that I found that saved a ton of dough. So, not that this was cheap, <laughs> but uh, you know, you save money where you can without compromising quality in my book. So, um, that's that. We have a ton to go over. I have all kinds of stuff to show you. I'm going to explain all of this. Do not worry. Um, I even mocked up my old system to show people who aren't into a motion chair setup how to set up a kick-ass system for relatively inexpensive. And it's really, really good how I had it. Um, I do have videos on my channel with this system running. Um, it's pretty cool. You can see I've got some really uh, slick ideas with double mounting joystick and uh, the yoke and spinning it around and all kinds of stuff in there. So well, I'll go over all that. Um, so grab a cold one, sit back, lock the bathroom door. We'll see. Uh, we'll go through all this stuff and uh, that'll be that. Got to have the bar close by. There's the table of disaster. Um, anyway, this is my son, Jackson. He's going to be, he's got a light ready. So when we go in close on this wiring, because it's all black, I want to make sure it's lit up good so you guys can see it and I can try to explain it best I can because it's pretty complicated looking from a distance. What I got here is just a little sort of room dedicated to this. I used to play music in here. And, uh, you know, I've got everything from the build that I've done. In the good old days when I had a desk, had an Oculus 2, bought it for my son for Christmas, and then got into the you know VR, and then uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator came out, and I hooked that up to his computer, and I was blown away. I was a pilot back in high school, so I've always had an interest in flying and whatnot. And that kind of just faded out of it with my career change and stuff. I have no time to be flying airplanes right now because that's not something you do half-ass. So I don't have enough time to dedicate to it, to do it for real. So this ain't too bad. So what we got, like I said, is our build boxes here. I'm just going to go through it all. So start on the floor. That is an HF8 haptic seat, which has been mounted on the chair right here. We'll get into all that. Um, valve index, base stations right here. You know, random mouse. This is an Xbox box. I just set it in here because I wanted to keep it nice. Um, butt kicker. This is a Vive Comfort head strap, which has been put onto a Pimax headset. This is all modded. These are 3D printed parts that you can buy that attached the Pimax to the Vive Deluxe, which gives you the better audio. I'm gonna go through all this wiring. This is what I was talking about that's complicated back here, but it's badass and it's gonna take some explaining, but we'll get into it. Anywho, so yeah, there's that. We've got a the motherboard, badass. This is a Butt Kicker Pro. 
get this. This is huge for VR immersion. I'd, I'd put it at almost at the top, man. It's right up there with like joysticks, in my opinion. When this thing shakes your butt in your chair, plus VR, it feels like you're there, man. It's a huge game changer. Get the Pro with the amplifier, which is here. I'll talk about that. Get the Pro with the amp, mount it on your chair post. It's easy. It's just like wiring a speaker. So we also have an air cooler, the Noctua D15 there. As you can see, there's a fan on it right there. I went with air cooling because I don't want liquids down here anywhere near any of this stuff. Plus the PC is wall mounted, so I don't want any liquids over here dripping down. No way. So the air coolers, this thing is just as good as a high-end air cooler. It runs cold. So um, we got the i9-13-9 maxed out chip. This is an aftermarket you know, iPad for the Pi Max. I actually ordered this from Alibaba. This is 22 millimeters thick. You can't seem to find these in the United States, but Alibaba had them. It was like two for eight bucks, no issues, they're nice. So don't be afraid to use Alibaba. I've ordered some uh, expensive stuff off there before and I've always got it, I've never had an issue. It's just as good as eBay. Um, spent thousands on there on one item and it was no issue at all. So. It works if you need it. I try not to use Alibaba, but you know, if they got what you want and nobody else does, go for it. But uh, you know, various fans and whatnot. You know, big old monster power supply, PCIe 5.0. So that plugged right into the graphics card, bomber graphics card. Uh, there's uh, the honeycomb yoke, which is not hooked up to this thing right now, but I have one. Thrustmaster TPR pedals. These are awesome. I think they're well worth the money. They're expensive. I think they're 600 bucks, but uh, I used credit card miles to buy them. And uh, they are a game changer compared to the uh, other lesser pedals. When people ask the question, like, what should I buy? You know, should I get... The higher end like a10 or vipper rolls or wing wing or whatever win wins and the answer to that is you know these things are expensive man and you can get the logitech x56 setup all of this for i don't know under 300 bucks or something and for the money it's very very good very very good i would say that's a great way to start but um, once you get into this, if you get serious about it a little bit, you're going to want these better setups. All of the other ones, all of the Thrustmaster, Wingley, they're all kind of the same. They're really good. This is legit modeled after an F-16, you know, authorized by the company. If you unscrew this and just hold this in your hand, it weighs like four pounds. It's ridiculous. It's like solid metal. You could kill somebody with it. It's not a toy. Um... You know, we've got the uh, Corsair keyboard right here. I'm going to go over all, all of this. But anyway, so yeah, that's kind of the, the previous setup. And I had, I'm going to go over right now the uh, previous setup just so it kind of makes sense. What I started with was like a desk. It was this desk right here. I just had everything set up like you would on anything. I had, and then on there and this will come into play later. What I kind of started doing was, I didn't like where the joysticks sat on the desk, so I bought these, these are desk mounts. They clamp onto here, and then you have these plates that can slide up and down on this pole, back and forth, so you can adjust the height and the depth of all your stuff, which is nice if you have to use a desk, right? So if you can't get away with uh, doing another setup, and you have to use a desk, get these, these are good. Pay attention to this thing right here, this little plate, this triple hole little job. You can unscrew these. These are the bottom plates for mounting your joystick or whatever. You put the bolts through, they slide around, whatever, you know. Obviously they're adjustable. You can remove them. They're all just bolted in like any anything else with these. So I took those off of uh, the other side. I had a couple of these. So you'll re you'll see these again. You'll see the other Hotaz right there does not have those on there. But uh, anyway, so the basic setup of what I had before, 
The key to doing a budget system that works really well, in my opinion, is this thing. This is called a Wheel Stand Pro. I believe you can get these on Amazon. They're probably 350, 380, and there's different models. This is the one you want though. You want the one that has the rudder, the silver lines that hold the rudder down, which is like bolted underneath with a plate and bolts, you know, it kind of clamps onto those rods. All adjustable. All of this is swing adjustable, height adjustable. The platforms are all adjustable. This thing is a keyboard stand. It actually even has fans and USB for whatever reason. But that's a separate item, so you have to order this thing separate. But it clamps onto the post, right? So what happens, you can put your keyboard wherever. So high, low, left, right, whatever. You can set this, you can set this thing over there. Do whatever you want, right? So now, here's some other tricks that work really well with stuff like this. I don't have any of this set up, I just threw it together to show you. But, if you look at some of, here's, here it is. If you look on here, you'll see these little black discs. Those are magnets, you can get them on e, uh, Amazon. They're very strong, they got some double stick stuff, you can do whatever with double stick, take it off, take it on. But what these do, you'll see, you know, they, they're like that, right? So they, they clamp on pretty good. What you do is you put those magnets on the bottom sides of these joysticks. Put four, six, eight of them. Put a lot of them on there because these, te these uh, wheel stamp pro plates are steel and they stick. So what that means is you don't have to bolt them if you don't want to. You can put enough magnets on. That way, when you're flying a center stick bird, you got it here. Hey, I'm going to switch to an F-16. Hey, I don't want to unbolt. I got magnets. Bloop, bloop, right? Then you can, if you want, you can put your keyboard here, or you can have a keyboard stand, or you can put it here. You can do whatever you want. Here's the other cool thing that I did. So I'm going to show you this chair. This is a random office chair that I had in the house, and it is actually better than... We tried my son's official gaming chair for the VR, and this works better because it's low back. So that's how I got into the low back seats, um, which will come into play later. There's a random office chair, and look what I did to it. You know how Monster Tech has those cutouts for the center cyclics and helicopters? I took a sawzall to this chair. Literally took a sawzall. I don't have the saw, but yeah. Brrr, and cut that out and just wrapped duct tape on it nothing you know and it works perfect right so that's cool you want a chair with adjustable uh, armrests that go up and down and stuff that's handy so I had a uh, one thing I did before just for whatever reason I had this actually you can see the marks on there from the tape I had this tape down here and then I was playing around with you know resting my arm with the joystick so this is like a big old mouse pad or whatever. I don't know. You can get stuff like this wherever. Tape it on, and then you can go up and down, and it rests your elbow back here. So it was really comfortable. But, uh, you know, stuff like that. This is what I'm talking about with this video. It's the thought process. Just figure out what feels good and try to build, build that underneath. Position your stuff, then build the supports. Now we'll go into this chair, how to build a cheap, awesome chair. So... Rando office chair, adjustable arms. Now down here, this is what gets interesting. So what I did is used a strap, one of these little guys, a little tie down strap. And what I did is wrap it around the back leg and then around the base of the seat so it wouldn't let the seat turn, it keeps it straight. I also replaced the wheels with these like rubber, you know, ends so the chair would not slide or roll at all on the floor. Then. I had a piece of PVC pipe in the garage. I also had a huge, like one of these bar clamps, right? This thing is long, obviously. It's like three and a half feet, three feet. And what I did, because here's a butt kicker, by the way, I have an extra one. You wanna mount your butt kicker on a clamp. The Pro comes with a clamp that goes right here. It's easy, wire it like a speaker. But the idea with this was to, I could tell like when I was using it that you couldn't feel the shake in the pedals but you could feel it in your butt with the butt kicker so this thing is a is a 
vibration transfer mechanism that I just sort of made up. A stiff post clamped, right? It's just laying here, but you get the idea. And then, so that would hold it like this, and it would clamp, and it would hold the whole unit together so it all shake together. It worked pretty well, but I ended up getting a second butt kicker to clamp right onto the pedals to really make it all sync together. So just an idea of how to get everything hooked, right? Just random parts. And then, um, <clears throat> but you got to spend the money where you need it, which is like this wheel stamp pro. This is a no brainer. If you're going to do something for real, this thing is really good. It saves you a lot of BS with, uh, positioning your stuff because it's miserable trying to deal with desks. And this thing has infinite adjustments and it's just beautiful. So do it. Um, yeah, so that's that. So yeah, another cool idea that I was doing. I had it rigged up. It's in one of my older videos. I had this set up like this. I had the joystick center mounted. And then, thank you, Jax. He's holding the yoke. I had both of these mounted. I have a big metal plate, which I had attached to this small metal plate. So both of these fit on here. That way, I could twist this around on a whim. If I wanted to yoke, whoop, it turned around. If I want to stick, whoop, turn it around. I want to take this off. This clamps on because it's heavy. No magnets on that. But this, you could just literally turn everything around. Bang, bang. I want it over here. I want it here. I also have, if you look on the floor, you'll see these aluminum extensions. Those are joystick extensions. They're actually for what I have on over there, but you can get them for anything. So what you can do is make this longer, right? So you can go whoop and make it foot long if you want. Then you can bend this down. This will turn back. This goes up and down. This tilts. So you can tilt your center stick down under here in your sawzall groove duct tape with with PVC and the clamp <laughs> and then get this down here like a cyclic right so but you can get an extension get it higher so it feels like a cyclic should instead of a short stick you know which you know isn't good for anybody to have a short stick so you want the long stick so that's how you do that um, but overall you know you got a free to cheap office chair some PVC, 300 in joystick stuff, probably call it 380 in the TP thing, you know, and you're good. Butt kicker is a few hundred. So for, you know, fifth, call it 1500, easy 1500. You got a, you got a rig that works well. It may look weird, but I, trust me, it works good. So that's where I started and you know I started upgrading everything and down the rabbit hole I went and I'm like oh I want to check out this DOF stuff so and I looked and I looked at the 6 DOF I actually put an order in for one and then I I got cold feet stopped put an order in for a yaw did that in January I had my unit I got an email from them what was it 70 days later uh, and my unit shipped fast after that. They told me it was shipping and it showed up and, uh, I don't know, 10 days or so. I had to do a little customs thing. So you'll get a thing from FedEx that says, Hey, customs got a sign. It's no big deal. <clears throat> Just do it, sign it and it'll show up. So you got to do it in three days. Otherwise they'll ship it back. So don't play around with that. All right. So now let's get to what everybody wants to see here. Um, this thing and the computer. I'll go real fast. LG C2 OLED, you know, 4K 120, super nice TV for a gaming monitor. It is awesome. They're nice. Get C1, C2, they're both good. Um, this is the computer. Now, I just completely homemade the computer, like I said, right? So I wanted, I started with the idea of what I wanted. I wanted it off the floor because I wanted room for this thing. So I want everything away from whatever. I had no idea how big this was going to be, so I wanted to clear. So off you go. Um, what we have here is a wall-mounted like thermal take case or whatever. You've got the 1300 watt power supply. You, and I'm going to go real slow in here so you'll see kind of like what I did with the wiring. I'll talk through it. Okay, so this is the remote for the TV. 
This is the Butt Kicker Pro Amp. This is supported by a, you know, a 3M garage thing. Like you hang rakes with this, you, you mount things on the wall of your garage, and then you buy these clips and they clip in. This is one of those I had. It fits in a little slot. See it hanging in there on the back? It just hangs in there like perfect. And it just holds my little, my little amp right there. This is a desktop power switch you can get on Amazon. Some Chinese golden field. I have no idea, but it works. And what that does, it plugs into your motherboard on your power supply switch. And uh, that way I don't have to reach up far and my son, you know, reach up to the side. You just reach under here and tap it. Plan here is to move this onto here. And you'll have even more USBs over there. But, you know, that takes a little doing. And I just, yeah, I'm just out of gas with doing all this. So, but yeah, that's cool. You just touch it there. Again, power supply. Now, as you look through here, you're going to see... There's the graphics card. I vertically mounted it with a homemade mount uh, with uh, just random computer component build parts. And I vertically mounted it where you would do a liquid cooler. And obviously this, when you do this, the stuff doesn't line up to connect. So I had to buy a big, you know, extender cable. This guy, it's really long. It goes from the motherboard underneath and then wraps. Now, as you go up, You'll see the RAM right here. That's Trident 7600 megahertz RAM. It's running at 7600 megahertz. I've got it stable at max speed. Um, this is a Maximus ROG Maximus motherboard. They just did a BIOS update that uh, supports all this high speed RAM and it works. So I've got that going. The graphics card's overclocked. The RAM's overclocked. And the CPU is also overclocked, maybe 5,500 or somewhere in there. So now this I'll get to. This is the cables for the keyboard, which travel back up through here to the keyboard. We'll go through that. This is just extra that I coiled and kind of wrapped around my homemade mount. I got my graphics card hanging by a, a strap. This thing is a street rod, but it's fast. It's very, very fast. You can't really make them any faster without, you know, going nuts. This, I hooked up, this is a Bluetooth transmitter. If you have like guests in your room, there's, you know, channel A and B so I can, you know, if people want to listen to in headphones, what he hears in headphones, they can. I also hooked up a monitor speaker up here, which just runs automatically. It's all wired in. So whatever is heard in the VR headset speaks right here. It's just an old jambone. I've had it for a year, jawbone or whatever. It's a Bluetooth thing. It works good. It's tough. This is your Wi-Fi antenna. It comes with the uh, computer or, or motherboard. So everything's all nice and neat, right? This is one of the valve, or no, excuse me, it's just uh, the HDMI cable and the power cable for the TV. Just dialed in behind the poster there to hide it because I'm not burying anything in walls. So, and then I got everything hooked up behind there. And then over to your other base station. I'll explain my thoughts on this too. Got some fun posters. My son in a Lakota. You know, this it's a cool little room. I also got the lights in the ceiling. They're uh, you know color changing LEDs and they're syncable with the games in the PC. So like whatever's going on, you know, you're getting your reds and your blues just like on the screen, which is cool. Now we have down here a Polk powered 12 inch subwoofer. And if you know anything about home subwoofers, this is a serious unit and it can shake a large house without issue. So what you have here, your volume, your low pass, which is your, you know, frequency response. You can go from 60 to 120. Now I set it all the way to 120, it's maxed. And then what I do up here, is set this, you can control your frequency cutoff to 120. Because the signal from the computer, the audio signal, goes through a butt kicker software. It's an app that you download when you buy this, and there you have to buy one to get it. Then you'll see it on your computer 
desktop, you know, your sound parameters, you, you send this and then it'll split your sound from to the butt kicker amp and then one more unit, say like your VR headset, right? So it goes here, so you get your butt kicker action and your headset, splits the audio. Butt kickers have software, proprietary software that will work with some games, like it's in their software library and they have specific like motions and feelings for like carrier landings or something. DCS doesn't have that to my knowledge at this time, so I just hook it to audio. You can hook it in through USB so you get that software action, or you can use like a 3.5 millimeter audio cable and it will just butt kick to the audio. Most people prefer the second option, the just the audio hookup for whatever reason. Now I went with that. So you have your computer audio signal going to here. Then what that does is comes out of the back. It's powered by a little, uh, it's a USB to USB-C in. Then you're coming out from here. What you have, when it's this cable, this cable right here with these RCAs comes down and then here's the end of that cable. You can see it's like a proprietary cable. I have it on the speaker inputs. Speaker level inputs has to be speaker level because this is powered and so it's sending an, a speaker output. So you cannot put a powered output into a non-speaker level input. Do not do this and put it over here or something like that, you'll fry stuff. It, your speaker has to be ready for the high wattage that's coming through these wires, it matters. So now you have the butt kicker audio signal coming to the woofer. Woofer woofs, right? Now that's the input, this is the output. This wire is now wired back up through all this and goes all through the cable down through my fancy wiring that I'll talk about and down to the butt kicker, right? So the butt kicker is being powered by the signal that is going through the woofer. So the butt kicker and the woofer are in perfect sync. I took that a step further. Now, the haptic chair is a very similar scenario. Jax, would you like to hold that? The haptic chair is a similar scenario. There's multiple ways that these can be hooked up. Again, a 3.5 millimeter audio, which is what I am using which is right here, and I'll go through all this. There's also USB, so you can do that software stuff. Again, DCS isn't covered, so I have it hooked through audio. So now, with only two audio signals, I'm trying to figure out how do I get all this figured out? Because I have to run um, the haptic chair audio off audio, and I have to run the earphones off audio. The audio signal comes through the USB cable from the computer to the Pimax and exits on a 3.5 right on the left side. There's two 3.5s. The stock headset uses both sides. When you go aftermarket with the Vive Deluxe, you go one side only, left side. You, do, you can ignore the right hole. As you can see, I don't even know where it is. It's somewhere over here, but it's, it's down. There it is. See it? So you can see it sort of right there, right there, the round thing. It's not nothing in it. You don't need it. Okay. Ignore that one. Okay. Hold this. So this is the deluxe comfort strap. This is another random comfort strap that I bought. So here's your audio signal anyway, coming out. I need to split this to the haptic chair. Okay. And the headset. So these are just little 3.5 splitters. I have two of them. So it's a splitter going in and then a splitter and a splitter so I have multiple outs. You get, you get two because you lose one when you do another one. So what you got here is a quick disconnect. It's all set up beautifully and I'll go through that. But a quick disconnect down. Everything is sort of zip tied correctly down to your haptic chair. This is your power button for your haptic chair. Your haptic chair is powered by 120. So you have a 120 cord and then there's your signal wire. There is another set of wires that I have tucked in here. You can see all that. That is all zip tied. Those are like the USB ties or, or pieces that 
if you want to do the USB haptic chair and get the software signals for your particular game if it's supported. Mine isn't, so I just tuck it away because I don't need it. Now, the other things to know about in here that are pretty amazing. Let's get the light. So, here is where the haptic chair is plugged in, okay? You have uh, these universal, go ahead with the light, and then let's get the light over here. And grab me that paintbrush. It's laying out. There's a wood paintbrush laying on the floor over there. So what you got there is the outlets. The chair, you know, is going to be plugged in on the wall. Now, this is an acrylic base plate just to make this stiffer on the carpet. Check out these legs, by the way. They had those big white ones before. Look at these. I thought this was wrong, but this is how they work. You can slip these out. These are like, yes, they're supposed to be like that. I took one apart looking for the screws, and it doesn't have them. And these are magnetically sucked in. If you watch close, it'll, it'll like grab it, and you just shove it in, and she's stiff. They know what they're doing. They got the physics figured out. She ain't going nowhere. But I still put an acrylic plate, like a plexiglass plate down just to stiffen everything up. All right, back to the plugs. They're universal. They automatically come to your country in, you know, whatever voltage you need. Mine's 120, American plug, no problem, went right in. That goes to the haptic vibration seat. Now, in here, the back of a Yaw 2 chair has a round receptacle for weights, counterweights for your pedal system that is heavy hanging off here. You need a balance system. This receptacle is designed for two 10 pound gym weights that would go on an Olympic size uh, barbell with the wider ends. Uh, so 10, 20 pounds there. The other thing to know what I did in my particular case is on my five point harness that I installed, these, this is the lap belt. There are shoulder belts that go up through the seat, come out of the back of the seat, and then they go down in here. I have their buckles, which are identical to these. They're just like seat belt things. They're flat. I have the first weight placed in here, and then I put those two buckles laid flat, and then the top weight on top, and then I screwed it down. If you look, you'll see a black knob that goes right through the center of the weight and then it screws in so the shoulder belts are screwed in between those weights and uh, it works fine it's nice and tight what i did notice after i put those two weights in and i got this mounted was the fact that it was definitely front heavy you could tell so i was like i need more weights so i didn't have anything that I knew of, I didn't. I bought two of these, figuring it because it fit too. I was like, well, it's probably enough. It wasn't because my TPR pedals are quite heavy compared to other pedals. So what I did, I went out to the garage. I was looking around for heavy stuff, and uh, I had an old mower that I sold, but for whatever reason, I had the front weight from the lawnmower, which is this thing. You can see it's a big piece of cast iron. It's a it's off of a zero turn Toro like 32 inch deck lawnmower. It, I assume I would bet it weighs 25 pounds. So you're looking at about 40 45 pounds of counterweight back here. Okay, so it's just zip tied in right now. It's massively stiff. It, it won't even move. It's wedged in there. So I'm gonna leave it alone and see how it works. Um, so what I did now let's talk about the seat. Jax, do you want to hold this? Right here so that stays nice on there so what you got under here is the yaw seat pan which this part is hard mounted onto the big unit this piece is loose the silver points are connected to this and then this is a floating square like a dinner plate size square which has bolt holes through it and will bolt to whatever seat you decide to mount Mine is a Jegs Poly Racing Seat Low Back. It's 20 inches wide. I think, I don't know if it's 27 inches high. And I had actual Jegs uh, five-point harness. This stuff is real. It's from a real race car. It just never got used. I had it in the house. And uh, I had that seat pan off 
And by the way, Yaw did not send me the seat that they were supposed to. This is the thing. Apparently, they had an order issue. They did resolve it. They are sending the seat as soon as they can. They know they're, they were responsive. No big deal. But I'm not even going to use their seat. This is better anyway by far. So my, my racing seat I had fit their plate well. There are six holes in the bottom of the seat. Like if you drain, if you dumped water on your seat pan, it would fall through six holes. They're bolt holes. They line up more or less. Go to my other videos and I'll show you the bottom of the seat. I initially put these seat belts on the bottom of this pan thinking, oh, I'm gonna screw the whole thing through the seat to the pan to the seat belt together. I did that in that video and I tried it, but this will not sit down if you do that. So you cannot put your seat belts on this thing. It's too tight, obviously. Look at this, there's nowhere anything's gonna fit. It's snug. So how this fits on, you put this on the seat, then it slides down, you clamp here, and then push it back, and it locks into these bolts. Then there is a front nut right there that you tighten, and it pushes that seat pan back against everything, and uh, it just holds it back so it doesn't slide. Okay, so that's that. Um, that works really well. So you've got your, everything is mounted nice and neat. The reason I chose this seat not because I just had it, but I thought about putting an actual ejection seat on this thing. You can turn the light off for a second. I thought about putting an ejection seat on it, but it's way too tall and heavy. So I went the opposite direction and I was like, wait, I got that racing seat. So I, I did it and I had that seat pan, hooked it up. I was like, wow. So that worked out. Um, Jegs Poly, you can find them. The seat belts, the five point all fits together perfectly. You seat cover, so it's nice. It's super light. So it's good for a motor chair or a motion chair. So it's not, it doesn't have a high center of mass or a high mass. So it swings nice. So that's cool. Now on to the really cool stuff. So what I did, I, um, the Hotaz mounts that come with the yaw are in my opinion of very low quality. I have another video. It's like a minute long, a few videos back that will show what's up with these. I mean, they're made okay, but they they have single bolt interfaces on them, which are really bad. It's They're real swingy. So what I did, I literally started going to the store, and I bought, like, brackets like this. This is a piece from, like, a dock part that I have for, like, a, a water dock, you know, like on a lake. Um, there's my old Pimax thing that I took off. There's the interfaces for those yaw hotaz mounts. That ain't holding nothing. Um, so I bought all this stuff. I don't even know where I found these, but I actually used one of these and it's awesome. And I'll show you that. In a minute. This is a random computer part. This is a foot from a, the LG TV and it's got steel in it. It's nice. So I was using that as like a, my, a mouse mount, but I don't need it. These are the stock parts off the f bottom of the foot plate of the yaw that are of no use to me. They're weakly put on and I don't need them with my pedals. Be very careful with your foot plates. These are not put on well. So don't be banging them around. Um, that's how I ended up knocking mine off. I'm glad I did though because I don't like them. They're uh, unnecessary weight. These things are components to my keyboard mount which I'll explain. This is <laughs> my Pimax silicone head cover over the VR headset that I had. That's absolute junk. So I cut it up and used it in the build. I'll show you that. Some random climbing equipment just to run your cables with. You can get these on Amazon. They're kind of cool looking silver and red. They're real, they're really strong, high-end stuff. I'm gonna go over the user guide. I'll, I'll video all this, each page, so everybody's got all that. And then there's a record online in case anybody needs a reference. So, yeah. Old build, uh, and here we are, right? So, long time to build, long time to build. Let's go back into this. Now, this is the meat. This is what's going to save you money when you, uh, and uh, are, are some really clever, good ideas. So, okay, so Hotaz mounts. There's for trash. Look at my previous videos. These things are bathroom shelf modern industrial pieces. You can get them at a big box in the shelving department. They're about five bucks a piece. This plate is comes from Yaw. This is the Hotaz plate. This is your floor flange. 
I used random bracketry that I have from all kinds of builds. This is a random bracket from Big Box, which I have laying over there on the floor. You can see the that L-shaped bracket right on the end of the stick, that thing, they're a buck. So that is all supported, right? Drilled holes wherever I needed to. Don't be scared of drilling holes. That's just an old zip tie holding it. But when I say it's stiff, I mean it's stiff. It's bolted hard. It does not move at all. At all. So again, there's your crotch belt, your seat cover. It all comes up perfect. Everything lines up beautifully. I store the headset right on there. We'll get to that. Now let's go back down here. So yeah, drill holes through your base plate of the yaw. Don't be scared. Use washers. Lots of big washers. The metal plate here is thin. So you want to be extra wide on your washers so they spread that force out nice. Now, so here's the clever part. The keyboard mount, which is what I was going to tell everybody about. So I was trying to figure out the keyboard mount. I was going to disassemble the uh, pedal system here and use this centerpiece and uh, just get that mounted in there somehow. But this is big and heavy. And I was like, eh, I'm going to look around. So I started to think about like what would work. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know. So I just Googled uh, ultra heavy duty keyboard mount. And I stumbled upon a like police equipment website. And I found this thing right here. This is a, whatever, a TCMHD001 22-inch heavy-duty tablet and keyboard combo mount. So these are designed to bolt under your seat in your car and hold a laptop, like a police car. So they're well-built, they're all metal, and hell yeah. So that's that. And here is some of the base plates, like whatever kind of car you have or whatever angle. This goes under your seat, so they give you a various stuff. This is a part of it that I cut off, which I'll explain. And then this is the tablet mount, which sat on that ball joint right there, which I cut off, so I don't use that. But this, if you buy this, you might want this. So don't just cut this off till you know you don't want it. What I did with this is cool. I'll show you. I ended up using, if you look on the thing, it's this, and I cut it like right here. So this little curve is this thing. And then this thing is like a little, you know, like I said, it, it extends. It sounds like a little switch blade, it pops out. So you could use that for something and ball joint it. These are tough too, they hold still. But I didn't want it because I just want the keyboard. So that's why I cut it. Now what I did was cool. I cut that little thing off right here, right? Here's the cut and I bent it down, so that's what holds my keyboard down, right, on the thing. I also, on my keyboard, I have one area in between the keys that I can slide a zip tie through and go underneath the mount, so it's super stiff. So this handled the center and the right of the keyboard, but there's no slot over here. I took these keys off when you're in VR, you hit escape a lot and you don't want to hit these so I just pop these off so you know the upper left key when you're blind is this one but for, anyway for the left side there's a tiny tiny edge on this keyboard right there right very small I took a screw a wood screw and got it I scratched it but right under that edge I caught it with the edge of the screw and mounted it down so it's tight look at that that holds that down so it's held down here here and here it's very simple. Now here's the mount. So here you have your keyboard. This here is a USB plug that powers whatever you want. I have this running my joystick. It just comes down the cable. Very neat and organized, right? Comes over the joystick. Boop, like that. This is a black US Air Force symbol I just laid in there to kind of guide the keys. This is the keyboard power which goes to the computer. So again what you have here is that. 
Now, here is a view of the mount. Look at how awesome that looks. It looks factory. It is absolutely perfect. You can't get any more svelte. You probably can't get any lighter, nor can you get stronger. If you think about it, this is designed for a police car, so it ain't gonna move. It is aluminum, right? It's hard. You know, you're gonna get a little jiggle because it's a heavy item on a post. But as long as it doesn't move, this doesn't matter. If your keyboard shakes slightly, so what? Because you're not, your hands aren't on it. You're just doing it whatever with that. These matter though. This needs to be stiff. So let's talk about this, how you mount a joystick the right way. So go ahead, Jax, if you want to hop in. By the way, check this out. So the five-point harness, this is cool. I found a pull-to-eject tab. It's like nicely sewn, you know, and I attached it to the, the cord, which holds your entire buckle in. This system is real, and it's designed to be removed fast, right? So if somebody's hurt, you can pull this all apart and uh, uh, do it like that. So when you when you yank on it, it works better with somebody on the watch. You just pull it to the left like, a, like an EMT would. You go like that, and the whole seat is wide open right now, and you're done. All right? Cool, huh? So... It's really nice. Um, it works exactly like it should in a real car because it's built like a real car. So anyway, so I'm going to show you how this opens up now. So Jax, can you, uh, this is a two hand job because you want to hold this upper part when you loosen this thing. So Jax, go ahead and grab here and hold and I'll, I'll loosen it. So to show them, you know, it's just one of these little guys like that. You just loosen it, bend it back, right, and stiffen it. He hops in, no big deal to get in. There's no wires in your way, nothing, right? And then you just bring it to where you want it, wherever your gut says it goes. Jax, can you tighten that? Or hold the keyboard? Pull it towards, you got it? Hold it right there. Now you just go here, tighten it, and you're done, right? Doesn't move, it's fine. Now he's gonna belt up and I'll show, I'll let go real slow, Jax. So you go, we'll teach people how to do a five point. All right. Left lap left shoulder goes over left lap crotch all in one piece it's got to stay you can loosen everything right shoulder goes right on the line right to the next you just line them up one after the other left lap where'd you put it oh you got it where'd it go <laughs> Oh, the damn, the belt came off, so oh. we'll do that in a minute. But actually, here, just hold this. Um, anyway, whatever, right? So the belt slipped off, but uh, I'll let him mess with that. I'm going to go back through these hotels mounts while you fix that. So again, here's your floor flanches, right? Ten bucks, one dollar bracket, drilled through, you know, washers. I cut it off because you don't want anything... On your yaw, you don't want anything below this black line because this swings, watch. You see that? Look how close that is. So that's why I cut it, right? That's your max turn. So you can't have like some random hotas mount hanging way down because you're gonna bang into this and you'll figure it out real quick. So, um, so don't worry about the strap jacks. So that's how you do that. But what I did here, this is rock solid, right? You know, it doesn't move anything. So that's good. We'll just leave that. Um, I'll have my son get out of the chair because, you know, we got to see it. And uh, now the wiring, right? Let's talk about this. So, again, sound is split into another splitter, which goes to the haptic and the earphones. This speaker wire powers the butt kicker down on the clamps the um you know and that has to go over to the amp back here which is all hooked in through the subwoofer so it does it's all in sync it all feels the same oh the hotas mount this is the clever part i forgot about this if you look right here you'll see these brackets right these are just bolts that i had this is one of the mounts from the police car kit. 
and then that just mounts wherever. But you'll see these brackets, right? And I have them sandwiched. There's one on the bottom and one on the top. Goes across. There's three bolts. If you look down there, row three bolts. Those are those Hotaz plates, which are right here, which I stripped off. These things. So I just took these off and then put bolts through them and then mounted the police car mount to the center of that. And what that does is clamps that right there. Now you'll see this rubber stuff. Guess where my Pimax uh, VR headset cover is. That was a piece of shit. Now it's guarding the white on here from the metal on metal contact. Just run the wires. Now, let's talk about the foot plate. This is where you could get into trouble. So you have these foot plates. These are the components. So you'll see these holes right here. Right, these like, these pieces would bolt in here. And then your foot plate kind of goes up and down. Right, you have these, like this. This one goes over here. These things are like, electro welded on right here you can see that unpainted line underneath of it i was trying to get one of these bolts through and the paint makes the hole smaller so i couldn't get the screw through so i had a rubber mallet laying next to me and i just tapped it lightly to get one through and this thing popped off completely and i was like what the hell like like i said there's no weld lines i don't know if they glue it on or electro weld or it's aluminum so i don't know what i'm not an expert on this stuff so but whatever so i'm like well, uh yeah no i tried to glue it and i'm like absolutely not so bye bye and bye bye left side take the weight off whatever right so what i did is drilled through their actual legs down here it's safe to drill through these on the end. It is not safe to drill up here. Do not mess or bend or clamp. That's why I have these style of clamps. There's no drills going through up here because that will compromise the strength and these are heavy and you don't want any nonsense in the design or curvature of these tubes. So this doesn't matter. This is dead ass weight. You can see where I bent the plate all the way across you know messing with it and this comes straight i did that it's not their fault so now how i did some clever wiring on the rudder pedals so tpr pedals they got a funky square thing and the deal is with this it doesn't stay in very well right but it does if you have it set right like cord tension matters you got to pay attention to every bit of cord tension you're doing Watch how you do this though. So down here, right? I want this cord to not get pulled down. So super tight zip tie around the cord so it can't fall through the hole. I had to drill this to get the end of the cord, the fat thing, to go through this slot. It wouldn't fit, so I blew a hole through here just to shove it through. But now that was all sharp. So what I did, I got my little zip tie to hold it over so it doesn't go down. Then I blocked it with another zip tie so it stays in the nice part of the slot where I didn't scratch it so it won't char the wire or escape, scratch the wire up. That way you got a nice, neat wire straight down, nothing going to the sides, clean, right? That's it. That's it for those. These pedals are sweet. I highly recommend them. They ain't cheap though. These are real metal. These feel so much better than the Logitechs, man. But um, the, uh, that's it. You can see where I bolted it through the plate using all my own sort of hardware slash holes. I put them where I want. You know, obviously you're going to pay attention to things and not drill through, through something important. So watch what you're doing. But you've you got a lot of playroom in here. So that's the idea, right? Think, think, think. Now, with this joystick, what I was telling you, like, Jax, go ahead and hold your hand out to the right. When you mount a joystick, you want to hold the joystick in the air with your hand, with no supports, and figure out where it's perfectly comfortable in the seat, right? Because that matters when you're going long 
long uh, sessions. You don't want this stick down or up or out or in or you want it right where your elbow lays nice bang. Then once you have that floating, what I did is I sat here and I said, okay, I want a platform right here. How do I do it? Well, I had already gone and bought endless crap, right? Bunch of parts like this. I thought might work right and in case this is like a deck joist to hold up a four by four for building a deck outside. You know, this is a TV foot. This is a piece of the yaw. Uh, this is a police car thing. There's your police car mount. I don't even know where these are from, but they're useful. Another computer thing. Deck. Uh, dock part. Random, random, random. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is kind of fun, though. The eject button right there. Pull your seatbelt off in a hurry. What, uh, speaking of pulling stuff, this is the safety key. It magnetically attaches to the right side of your little USB ports back here, right? So that's that. How the USB works, how do they do it? Okay, so this is gonna control your hotazes, whatever you got on the chair. I had too much, so I ran my joystick off my keyboard. My pedals and my throttle are here. Now I have a spare ready to go in case I want it, um, whatever, right? You can do it any which way you want, but this works fine. I liked it this way because it's cleaner wiring. You can see how I ran the wires all together. I mean, I didn't go too crazy, but I kept it nice, you know, just keeping it clean so it doesn't get in the way. All this is tucked in. This is the haptic chair sound, etc. right? Right lap belt right here. That's his right lap, his right shoulders under that weight in the middle. So now, we go back up here. Now, Jax, can you put on the headset for me and we're gonna show him the tricks and about the weights in the back. So, now here's some very clever stuff that I figured out through trial and error and just playing VR, okay? So, this is new, I just made this up now. Um, this is the cord for the keyboard, right? This is pretty stiff cord, it's quite, quite firm. And then, this is the cord, for, this is an extension, excuse me, I bought these extensions off Amazon. This is the cord that comes out of the keyboard. It's a two-pronger. One's for your USB, which would be your joystick in this case, and one's for the actual keyboard. You can run it with one, whatever, so. Anyway, this is that random bracket. See that bracket? I just straight bolted it in to the chair. That's what this bracket, I don't know where I got it, but this is what it looks like. It's got two holes, whatever. You could use anything, find something at a store. But the idea here is, is to get the keyboard cable away from the back of the chair. I did not want it running. It's gonna run up here if I don't do it and it's gonna hang this way. It's quite heavy, you, do, you got too much going on, right? So. Here is, this took a lot of figuring. So now there is one of those extendable spring-loaded keychains and a ceiling hook directly above his head. So it's mapped down. That's on a leash, right? So it, it extends up and down as you can see him moving his head, right? Go up and down, Drax. Now you'll see this is the wiring for the haptic chair and the butt kicker. This needs to go through the upper cord because it's got to go to the computer, but how do you do this, right? You don't want a bunch of cords. So I brought it down, but I separated these out right here. So it goes to the back of the chair, butt kicker, haptic chair, right? Now here's the cool part. These are the straps for the haptic chair. I use those as like a guide for the cords, right? So they can't fall out to the side and go down here. Under there though, now look here. This are washers on a little, like, whatever, Velcro strap with a zip tie underneath of it so they don't fall lower on the cord. This is tuned, right? Jax, now watch what happens when he leans his head forward. Pull your head forward. Now stop. You'll see how the weights went up, right? Now there's, stop. Keep your head down, please, until I tell you. Um, you can see the, the uh, weights are up. There's no zip ties in here, so it's smooth, right? It's the first ones here. That way, when he raises his head, 
that weight pulls those cords so they don't get caught in your neck, which is super annoying. These are two dead D cell batteries that are counterweights for the Pimax, which is pretty heavy. So that counteracts it, so it balances. You can set that thing on your finger on the center of there and it'll balance, so it's perfect. Now watch when he pulls his head back, watch the weights. See how that? And it pulls the cord back over the chair, smooth. That way it doesn't bunch in your neck. That's super annoying when cords are doing that. But, so I had to do that, I had to make this up today. I used to just do this, but now I gotta do it with the butt kicker. So I did that, wired that in. I wanted this out of here because you get too much of this going on. This is stiff enough where you can feel it on your neck and it's like annoying to like turn your head because it's kind of like, you know, almost like it's a muscle that's tense. But so I, that's why I split that up there, right? So it goes back and this holds it out. This is all out of the way. I checked all that. It ain't going to hit nothing. So that is how you do that, right? You add a little weight, run it along something. So that way it's, it's kind of the same thing as that. It's just retracting the cord. This is pulling up with a spring. This is pulling down with a weight. So it keeps your cords out of your hair and it keeps them tight. See, if you look, he never gets cords in his neck when he looks around. See, look at it move. Go ahead, go crazy, Jax. Look down, bandit left side, nine o'clock, low. Five o'clock, low. Turn your head. Yeah, you'll see the wave moving though, and that keeps the cords clear. So springy, weighty, stretchy, bind it all up. You gotta play with this, right? To have somebody sitting in and jiggle all your zip ties in the right spot, whatever, right? Takes It takes some time. But then, boom, we go up to the ceiling, we go back, down, clean as a whistle. It's all hooked into the computer. And now we'll go through that. You know, you've got Bluetooth transmitter for people to listen, monitor speaker so they can hear what he hears, your VR controllers, which are Valve, not Pimax. I don't like, you can mix and match whatever you want. This is a like a nice case. You know, it charges, they're charging, bolted to the wall, you gotta run power to it. But that's nice so you don't mess around with your cables or you have to use cords. It's just clean and off the floor again, so. Everything's all beefed up in here, you know, crazy wiring everywhere. I just, you know, just put it together. I kind of wanted to do a street rod, you know, a cool looking one, but this is about as fast as you can get. The i9 4090 overclocked 7600. There's a little faster Rams, but not much. But so she is an absolute beast. Then you got your butt kicker, nice clean wiring, all clean. You got your uninterrupted, you know, sine wave power supply, so your computer uh, gets a perfect flow of power. It can modulate from the power company. This keeps it, it keeps it clean. Look it up. It's a there you go, fifteen hundred. Go see him. Polk Audio. This thing's a beast, dude. Shakes the house. So there you go. Um, Trying to think of anything else. I have done zero software tuning on the chair yet. I haven't even plugged it in. That's the next step. I'm almost scared to do it at this point because I've worked so hard on this that if something doesn't fire, yeah, it's gonna be a, gonna be a hangover the day after that. But uh, yeah, so like I said, man, super clean. Just think your way through things and you know, you'll get it. I hope I got enough of this video. I'm trying to get all this stuff, you know, so people can go back through it. You can kind of see how I just drilled through. I'll take a real slow tour. Butt kicker mount on foam. Simple zip ties, right? There's your, your squeezy clamp, hotaz mount, keyboard police car mount with Pimax silicone perfection but it is perfect oh the other thing i forgot to mention the mouse the mouse oh the, the all-important mouse when you fly and you're right-handed you do not want a right-handed mouse you want your hand on the stick look at this throttle mouse hand on stick you don't always need your hand on the throttle 
but you usually do need it on the stick. So this is a superior solution to anything that I've seen anywhere. Now, here's 